Well, well, what you're viewing is just part of my small collection of older and various electronic components. Everything from TO220 transistors, MOSFETs, microprocessors, TRIAC. These are connectors off of motherboards and so forth. All right, now I'm going to upset everybody. If you are irrationally terrified of toxic materials, then you need to get out of the electrical and electronics industry completely. Everything you see on this table, a great deal of it, has things like beryllium oxide, it has lead, it has cadmium, and so forth. Here's a collection of transistor, mostly transistors, larger ones, TO220 types that I've salvaged out of boards that I've rebuilt over the years. You're talking about a weight total of a half a kilogram, probably has 200 grams or so of copper. But how hard is it to get that copper out of that scrap? And this is highly concentrated scrap. Here is a PC card. I haven't stripped anything off of it. As you see, this all of this here is probably copper. All of that's copper, copper, copper. The total weight of the board is, and I have a little scale here. If you can see it, it's about 33 grams worth of uh, the whole circuit board, of in which probably copper is maybe 10 grams or a, about a third of an ounce. This is a board that came out of this is a lithium ion uh, charging block for a drill. Turns out what was defective in it was this board. That board weighs about 48 grams. You might get total metal out of it maybe 15 at the most 20 grams. If you look at it here on the back, a lot of solder. <coughs> what else came out of that particular uh, battery box? was all of these nice lithium-ion batteries. Uh, if you take these down to the recycler, they'll throw it in the trash. Nobody here collects uh, these type lithium batteries. Turns out the batteries were completely good. The charging circuit, this, is what was defective. Not only do you have lithium here, these metal tabs that you see all over the place are reputed to be nickel. Now, the question becomes, and I know there's a lot of fanaticism over recycle, recycle, recycle. First of all, a lot of this crap like this and like this will end up in some third world country. Why? Because the process, let's just, let's just take this one that might have 10 grams of copper. Uh, or a third of an ounce of copper at the most. How do you get this copper out? You will have to burn off or use extremely strong solvents to remove all this paint. You have to burn all the organic stuff out of it. That creates toxic smoke and pollution if not done correctly. Then you will have to dissolve the remaining copper in some kind of um, chemicals, maybe there is an electroly electrolysis pro uh, method of getting it out. But for that 10 grams of copper, you could, not counting the, and I took this apart, 
in advance. You, that's not counting the shipping, shipping the crap around, the cost of disassembly, the massive amounts of pollution generated from burning it off and trying to extep, extract that 10 grams of copper. Um, and there's probably no gold to speak on this to, to speak of. Manufacturers are using less and less gold to cut cost. So you're stuck with a lot of worthless, uh, basically even cheaper metals. I bet you there's almost as much lead in this particular board as there is copper. Lead goes for even far less than copper. There's less and less actual gold or silver to be recovered. So you ended up with a bunch of burn boards. You ended up with a couple of gallons of toxic liquid waste. And yes, I know how to extract uh, gold from boards. I elected not to do it because of the amounts of toxic liquid toxic waste produced and the fact it just isn't worth it. The question becomes on all of this, putting aside your emotions and that it feels good or you, it's sort of a salvation a little bit, oh, I'm doing the right thing if I recycle, just because it feels right doesn't mean it's common sense. You would be far better off if you could reuse something great. I reuse tons of stuff. Everything I can reuse, I reuse. I will take it down to the recycler when I'm done with it. When I'm done with it, there's not much on it. But the fact comes down to 90% of the time this garbage ends up in a third world country. And you can uh, do this on the web where people even have it at home trying to melt lead and solder off these things in their homes. Or they're burning big piles of old wire or tearing stuff out of computer power supplies and burning it in their fields to try to get that little bit of metal out. Let, let, let's be serious, folks. Recycling sometimes is stupid. Why in the world, if you want to save the planet, would you want to waste three gallons of fossil... Why would you want to use three pounds of fossil fuels to try to recycle a pound of old Coke bottles? Why would you do that? Just because you think it feels good and it's the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to produce the least amount of pollution possible. And sometimes, by the time you get through stuff like this, you've been better off burying it somewhere. Let's take a look at this item. Nice little three-prong plug. It cost a dollar at Dollar Tree. I use them quite often. Why would I, what, what sense would it make to ship this to some third world country and have to burn off all of this uh, plastic, rubber, and vinyl, and the rest of this stuff for maybe two cents worth of worthless metal? two cents worth of metal and you're going to make a big cloud of burning smoke trying to get a little bit of metal out of this, throw it in the dump. Now, let's go with some other common sense deals. Typical handling of most electronics, including magnetrons, and I know that's going to agitate certain people, handling this stuff is completely safe. Handling solder is completely safe, lead, including lead solder. If you're that worried about, about something on your hands, then go wash your hands. That wouldn't hurt anyway. But a typical lot of this stuff, even that these might have more gold than this typical piece of crap, the process is still going to yield a lot of toxic chemicals and waste. Because when you get down to it, these are not worth much. And anything that you do, if I'm going to recover the 200 grams or so of copper from this, I'm going to use a lot of energy. I'm going to use a lot of chemicals. 
I'm going to probably create more pollution than when I started with. Now this is okay. I've considered extracting copper from it. I may go ahead and use a process to do it. This by weight, this is a TO220 transistor, has a fair amount of copper. It also contains uh, beryllium oxide. The typical integrated circuit like this contains nothing salvageable per se. There might be a little copper in the leads, but a lot of times the leads are steel. Steel is worthless. Okay, it's I think it was last time I checked was two dollars for a hundred pounds. I'm not gonna this case is part this case is steel, so I have to eject that out of the pile right off the bat, because the steel's worth nothing. Other than you just throw the whole transistor into the steel bin, maybe. But the, the moral of the story is this. Recycling sometimes doesn't make sense on a lot of things. Is maybe two cents worth of metal worth burning this off in Africa or Pakistan or whatever a lot of this recycled electronics you th and these and I'll bet and I'll bet most of these tubes end up crushed and buried so that's, that's you have to realize that because it feels good environmentally doesn't mean it's right it doesn't mean it's good for the environment so the bottom story is here you're going to be handling lots of stuff that has toxic materials as metals like this, it's completely harmless. Uh, you might want to, if you handle a whole, whole, whole lot of it, then wash your hands once in a while. Do not sit here and grind on it or drill on it or any of that kind of stuff. That throws up dust. If you're going to be grinding and drilling, wear, dust, wear at least a dust mask. And like one guy was talking about, yeah, these pens have some gold in them. So you can sit here and pick on, you can sit here, come up, oh, I don't know, you'd probably have to take 10, 12 motherboards and tear all the pins out of it with a pair of pliers. That doesn't have it, that's beryllium copper. Um, you might get a pound of these pins if you could get them all out of a motherboard. You'd probably have to burn half the motherboard up to get it. And by the time you go through extracting it, you might have $3 worth of gold and several gallons of toxic waste. Let's be realistic. This is the electronics industry. We've been here a long time. Things are getting better and better. And please spare me the resource depletion nonsense because I've heard it for 50 years. We have plenty of resources. And it's and if the and if the cost of this stuff warrants extraction, then somebody will find an economical way to do it. We just need to keep them from shipping it. You just have to watch these recyclers and make sure they don't cut corners or ship it to some se uh, third world cesspool where people are paid nothing and nobody cares if they die. I care. I don't want to see poor people burning piles of this crap. So somebody could make a few pennies on the pound. So, so this ends this little lecture or little rant or whatever you want to call it. You, um, you're in electronics. You're going to be handling this stuff. Uh, a lot of it, if misused, is going to be toxic. But the fact is you'd have to really, 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 really work to poison yourself handling electronics. Of any kind. So, thanks for listening. Uh, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.